Hey guys, what's up? Raju here from VFX World. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are doing absolutely fine. Guys, this is Element 3D Class 10, and in this video, I'll show you how you can create this amazing three-dimensional effect by using Element 3D inside of After Effects. You guys are already excited for this, so without wasting any time, let's get started. So guys, right now we're in After Effects version 2020 and this composition was very, very heavy composition. So I can't show you the exactly same to same. This is very long around 30 seconds. So you can understand the how much heavy is this. So I will show you this process in a less resolution and also a less capacity of model. But if you increase those resolution and capacity, you can get the exactly same to same output. Okay, so first of all, you have to take a new composition. So I'm taking from here. And for this, I'm taking only 720p by 480p because very less and it's very helpful to easily handle. So I'm renaming it like element and then just press OK. So after that, we have to take our right click new solid and let's take it like a BG. So first of all, you have to create our BG. I'm taking a gradient ramp, double click and then linear, radial, swap these colors, click here, click here as well. And obviously you have to select this and click and drag it something like that. Now click to this one as in blue. I'll create this entire effect in not in yellow kind of tint. I'm creating it like a blue kind of thing. Let's create a different kind of uh, output. So now our basic BG is done. And now we have to create our element 3D layer. So right click new solid element 3D and then just press OK. Now this is our basic scene setup and for creating those gribble effect we have already on our motion design pack part one. So I'm taking from here and this is our gribble 24. So I have only this much. So this is enough for this scene. If you have a very good PC, you can use multiples to get a proper high resolution output. But in this case, I'm using only this one. Now to handle this model in a very proper way, you can decrease the size. I will decrease it, but I'm selecting this again, a gravel box 01 as well. Now I'm moving it to until this area. Now both the models are in a very high resolution, very hard to handle. So just select both, click the scale button and have to decrease the scale value to a little bit down. Now if you notice, it is very easy to handle. Now you have to apply your basic textures in it. So I have some specific textures. So go to preset, I have this urban decay. Now from physical shaders, I'm going to this concrete option and go down. If you notice, I have some specific textures called Rainforge 03. So double click here, so it will apply here and double click here as well. So I am applying the both texture in the same way. Now for the environment, I want to give it a bluish kind of tint. So I'm selecting from video copilot. I have the basic 8K map and go down, I have this some specific options here. So I'm selecting this backlight 8K, so it will give a proper tint kind of blue effect here. Then just press OK. So guys, I already have our basic scene set up here. Now go to full resolution to a little bit like quarter. Now we have to make our camera animations here. But before doing camera animation, we have to create our entire model set. Now guys, this is our basic model here. So just right click new and take our new camera. I'm selecting like around 50 mm because I love to give it like 50 mm is very good. Then just press OK. So this is our basic camera is done. If you notice this is our model, it's already pretty high. So I'm making it to like quarter. Now to give this a proper look, we have to go to this particle replicator and from here to point, I'm giving it to like 3D grid. And now this is a three dimensional grid if you notice. So this all has like three by three by three. So from this Y grid should be like two and the like excess grid, like let's take around four and the Z axis also in four. Now after that, we have to increase the X, Y, Z scales to arrange it properly. So I'm increasing this the X value and make it something like that. And I'm also increasing the Z value to something like that. Now, if you notice there are multiple gaps here. The basic idea is we have to fill these gaps to avoid our BG. So now we have to adjust our Z positions and all. Okay guys, I have adjusted our X and Z position, but we have not adjusted our Y position. Now we have our specific depth, but we need a specific depth in a very short way. So I'm decreasing the Y value to let's take around 0.80. So now it's very narrow down, something like that. So when the camera will go inside of this, it will look just amazing. Now we have to do our basic camera animation. Now if you notice, it's already getting lagging because as I told you, this is a very high level composition. So I'm just doing our basic camera animations here. So something make it here as well. And now we have to go to this camera. We have to press P, then shift A to point of interest and then shift R to give us this orientation and rotation. Now turn this on all, go to the last frame and something press shift and drag it to infinity. Now, if you notice when you press shift, it will zoom it very fast. 
So now what happened, if you notice the camera is in very low angle, so I'm just making it a little bit higher angle, something like that, and then just zooming it. So give it a specific rotation, go to the last frame, and from here Z rotation, just take it like one. So now what happened when you play this, it will start rotating something like that. It's pretty amazing. Now I want to give a very specific animation look. So just click this element 3D layer. Now you have to go to this replicator effects. Now from here, if you notice the position noise is there. What position noise is doing, it's exactly shifting the models in a different, different axis. So I'm just increasing the noise. If you notice, this is exactly happened when you're increasing the noise. So what I'll do, I'll taking a keyframe and go to the last frame and I'm increasing it like to 20. 20 is very good enough. Don't increase too much, otherwise it can't come in front of your camera. Now if you notice, this is the output what I'm talking about. See, it's very coming close and when it's coming to depth of field, it's looking just amazing. Now I have to go to this render settings. From here, we have to click this ambient occlusion and turn this on. Now after that, we have to click this from five and the radius should be, let's take around five. Now you need a light here, so go here. Now for giving us a proper light setup, we have to create another camera, which is a guide camera. So just click this camera and let's take it like a fake cam because this is a fake cam as I know. So just make it like a 35 mm. So this is a fake cam is turned on right now. Now from this camera, you can move it and check your scene that how it's exactly look like. So this is our basic camera is starting from here. So now I have to click this new light and I need a mean light here. So click this ambient light and click this bluish tint little bit. So I'm just making it some bluish tint and then just press OK. So just make it intensity like 100 is good enough and then just press OK. So when you turn this fake cam off, you have this your basic camera. Now when you go to the full rays, you can exactly see how it's look like. So this is your basic output will look like after applying that ambient light. Now you have to add some more lights to give it a more specific render. So before that, you have to go to element 3D and have this lighting setup. And from here, I'm selecting like underwater because this underwater light is also giving a bluish kind of tint effect here. Now you have to give another lights from here new and taking a new light, which will be our parallel light. So the parallel light color, let's take around a little more bluish kind of thing and it should be something like that. And then just press our intensity should let's get around 20, 200 and then just press OK. And we have to adjust this light position here to press P here. Now you can move your position of light something like that. I want like this from front. So it will come from front something like that to give a proper shadow. Now this is fine. Now go to the element 3D, go to the shadows and just turn on this shadow. Now guys, we are almost done, but as you know, without depth of field, this kind of renders will not work. So what I'll do, I'll just go to this camera and just decreasing the from full rays to quarter and I'm just making it like camera option and then just turn this on. Now we have a specific depth of field, but in this case, I need a very shallow depth of field. So I'm just decreasing the focus distance to in front of camera, something here, and then just increasing it to a little bit. So what happened? the depth of field is very high so the background will be completely blurred so when the camera will move the exact scenarios will come in focus something like that so just i'm making it like 180 the focus distance is 180 it's very good enough and uh, yep this is fine so when you go to the first frame the entire scene will be complete blurred when you come forward forward it will come in focus if you notice this is coming in focus and after that it will look like something something like this okay now guys this is your chance to create some amazing render output and you can tag me on instagram facebook and linkedin anywhere if you still not follow us on over there you can follow me link are all in description box below now if you really love my these videos and all then don't forget to like comments and share and also subscribe our channel vfx world and press the bell button for more notification right now we have our join button available so you can join on vfx world as a prime member so go and join if you wish and guys i will see you in next video till then have fun Stay healthy, keep rocking, keep watching VFX.